Well, hey, welcome back to our shop just outside of Kennesaw here in North Georgia. Well, today's project is this Lane Acclaim Buffet from 1964. The backstory on this is two years ago I located this on Craigslist and I picked it up as a surprise Christmas present for my wife. I smuggled it in the house while she was gone and set it up and she came home and for a couple hours she didn't even realize it was there until she discovered it and then great joy was had by all and I was a hero. When I bought it, it, uh, it had some finish flaws, but the important part to know about this piece is its original finish. In fact, it's a two owner piece and it had the original hang tags still in the drawers. I've taken the drawers out to protect them there inside the house, but this, is, uh, this piece here needs a little bit of work. Why? Because I brought it home and we set it up and my wife asked me to refinish it and like the cobbler who has holes in his shoes, I just never got around to it. Well, as women are wont to do, she kind of turned up the pressure a little at a time, a little at a time, some subtle hints like emptying it out, leaving everything on the table. So I decided for the in the interest of domestic tranquility, it was time to get on with her buffet. Let me show you what we're up against. It's, it's going to be a little bit different. And I'll the issues with this piece are, is just the finish on the top. And again, this is original finish, and I hope you can see this, but there's this faint square line or square shape, right square in the middle of this piece. Something sat here for years and years and years and left this. And then we have a very faint coffee ring right here, coffee cup ring right here, that we have to address. And then there's a couple of scratches and a couple of dings. Now the scratches and the dings she's okay with, but she does want the stains out. Now as I look at this piece, it seems to be quite, quite oily. So I'm not sure what's been put on, what's been put on it before we, we, uh, we got it. If there's any way I can get these stains out and leave the original color intact, that's what I'm going to try to do. So we're going to start very gently with some cleaning solution to see if that does it. If that doesn't do it, I will uh, use a little bit of acetone to see if I can get some of this up and if that doesn't do it uh, we may have to strip the entire top and uh, and color match it and refinish it but if we can do it the easy way I'd really like to do it the easy way we've got the piece all taped and masked up uh, the more I look at this the more I'm starting to believe this is going to wind up being a strip job there's lots of little finish flaws here but let's see what we can do the first step is a little bit of soap and water I'm using some uh, clear water and some Dawn dishwashing detergent it's on a piece of 4-ounce steel wool. Now if this square stain was just dirt that had uh, leached in from say a pot or something, this, this might help take it off, but it's not budging. I didn't think it would with that. So. While I've got this open water out, I'll wash this entire piece. Now the next step, if it was what I considered to be a dirt stain, would be some commercial cleaner like uh, Crud Cutter. But I know from experience and how this is looking that this is not what we're dealing with. and This is into the finish. So we're going to have to get more intrusive. You know, it's amazing how many people during this time period, this, this piece is from 1964, uh, smoked, and although this piece does not have any odor of tobacco, it does have what I believe are some cigarette burns in it. Cigarette burns are extremely difficult to get out, and uh, very often all you can do is lighten them up and finish over them. But you can see, I hope you can see that 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 soap and water did absolutely nothing. On to acetone. Now acetone should dissolve or help dissolve the upper layers of this finish, which should be lacquer, and we'll see how it does taking out the stain. I don't hold up a lot of hope. And again, some four odd steel wool. And actually, that looks like it's lightening it up considerably. Let's see what happens as I continue to 
apply this. I can feel it's starting to get sticky, which means it's starting to bring up the dissolve the finish. Yeah, see that that took a lot of it up, but it also took pretty much all the lacquer off, which is fine. The acetone on the steel wool pad lifted up the majority of the lacquer finish. But what we're seeing underneath the lacquer is this stain. And while we rub it and continue to go through the lacquer finish, has lightened up quite a bit. Let's try over here. Alright, so if you can see that this is, it's still here, but it's coming up. So I don't think we're going to need to oxalic this. And in light of the way this main stain is down to the wood, and in light of the fact that we have dents and dings and other water rings that really need to come out, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to strip this piece and do what I can to preserve the color the natural color or the original color but if we have to touch it up and color match it we will and yes I'm going across the grain with a 4 out steel wool here but it's it's lightening up but it's it's still there so it's still going to need to be sanded out so rather than strip this entire piece with acetone I'm going to strip it with stripper and uh, we'll deal with it as we would any any other uh, refinishing. So let's get the stripper out. And you guys have seen me strip a thousand times. I use methylene chloride stripper. I brush it on, let it set for a little while, and then I scrape it off. On a piece like this, just be real careful. You don't want any drips getting by your masking and going onto the piece where you're going to have to refinish additional parts of it. Just take your time. Be careful, particularly around the edges. I keep a rag with me to keep any drips falling off onto the, on the legs or any of those pieces. Be real careful around the edges. You know, as much as I would have liked to come up with some clever, clever touch-up solution for this top, the more I'm looking at it, the more, the more damage is here that needs to be addressed. And really, this is the only way to do it correctly. So, this is this is the right decision. We have the top stripped off and with the finish off you can see that we have some damage here. Dents. These all these dents are gonna to have to be steamed up. This huge scratch here is gonna to have to be steamed up and we'll see what we're gonna to have to do with it. We may have to if we can't get it to steam up and sand out, we may have to put some wax on that. We've got scratches all over, and then we still have this gigantic stain and if you look kind of in raking light I think you can see that the grain is opened up around here that indicates to me that this was water and we got another big scratch here and cigarette burn here and here these cigarette burns are not deep they haven't taken the wood away sometimes they're they're actually like convex but or concave rather 
but uh, it's still nonetheless. Okay, so next step is going to be to steam up these dents before we sand. Now let's see how we do. This rag is clean and it's damp. Feels like it's coming up a little bit. Oh yeah, good. Yeah, this is the one that if we couldn't get this up, this was going to be a bit of a challenge. We'd have had to fill this and probably done it with a hard wax. But we're getting real close to getting that up to the surface. Yeah, I hope you can see that. That, that, that is a whole lot better. Now let's see how we do on these little bang marks. Almost looks like a little hammer, like some kid hit it with a little hammer or something. Oh wow, that's coming up too. Good. The reason I'm steaming before I'm sanding is to minimize the amount of sanding that I have to do. Because I'd have to sand after I steamed. And I forget, let me get this up as high as I can before I start sanding. Because I've only got so many millimeters of uh, veneer. Okay, we're making, we're having some success with the sanding or the steaming, which is good. All right, I'm gonna turn you off. Let me get the rest of these steamed up. Hey, there's another technique for uh, leveling out a piece of wood like this uh, instead of sanding, and it's scraping. Now you can either use a cabinet scraper, and I have those, or what I found is really easy because you don't have to sharpen them it's just to take a, a straight edge razor like this and then basically what I do is I'll just try to get this so you can see it just push it along the wood and it'll take up like that and you see I've scraped over this gouge and I've got that almost level the dents are almost level so I'll work on that, and uh, obviously we want to work on this stained area as well, and then we'll finish up with sandpaper. And it's just another way of taking off layers of wood, and I can feel when I go over that stain that it is, it's raised, it's grabbing the, it's grabbing the scraper. And it's going to lighten it up. I, I think we're going to be able to, uh, once I get this scraped off, I'll sand with 220 and I'll hopefully most of this stuff will come off. You can see now that we've, we've got the finished off, we've got this line here from the square, we've got a circle here, there's a stain here, so this, this top was in worse shape than I thought. Alright, I'm going to get back to scraping and then uh, we'll start to sand. Oh, by the way, before I, uh, I scraped, I did uh, water wash this top and neutralize the uh, stripper. And by using that scraping technique, we've got this real deep gouge very, very much better. I remember the color is because the, uh, the, the stain is still in there. But as far as level and, and void, it's, it's much better. And we haven't even sanded it yet. The uh, water stain, the square water stain has faded. And uh, this every place this stain was, the, gra the grain was raised. I could feel it when I scraped it. So that's a more smooth now. So what we're going to do now is sand with 220. And if we can't get all these stains out, then we'll oxalic. So the next step is sanding with 220. Dust mask is on. Fresh pad. Okay, we've sanded this off and it looks like we've had great success. Uh, there's just a very, very faint mark left from the big scra scratch. Uh, the dings have been sanded out. All the other scratches have been sanded out. And it even looks like our stain is sanded out. However, always do this. Take some naphtha and put naphtha on your piece. And this will give you an idea of what it's going to look like with finish on. 
Yeah, it is shadowing back in. All right, let me see if I can show you where what we're dealing with here. Can you see right here? It's very faint, but it's shadowing back in. So if we left this as it was, when we put our finish on, you're going to have these lines popping back through. Let me get these highlighted for you and swing around on this side where maybe you can see it better. But can you see it? Right there. And then up here. So we're going to have to oxalic acid this piece to get the, that stain as light as we can. And if you look here, here's the cigarette burn and that's that's even lightened up. That's going to stay the way it is. That's, we call that patina. The cigarette burns can be a disaster to try to deal with. Alrighty. So the next step is oxalic. I bought the piece outside to let the Georgia sun have its way with this uh, top that's got oxalic on it. And you can see it's drying off nicely. We look here. And again, it's difficult to say because the oxalic's not completely dry. But it looks like we've had some pretty good success with this line here. Uh, this line here is still a little bit visible. And then across the top is as well. Let's uh, be patient. Let us let this dry. And uh, we'll see if we need to do a second coat. But this is clearly going to be the challenge for this piece that's getting that, uh, that square stain out. Well, thanks to the bright Georgia sun, we're dried off, so I'm going to rinse this off and we'll see how we did. I think I'm being rewarded for leading a just and righteous life because it looks like that stain is completely gone. So I've got some more rinsing to do. We want to get this completely off of here. We'll let it dry and we'll see what we're dealing with. But right now it looks really good. And uh, believe it or not, I think that cigarette burn is gone too. I'll be switched. All right, cool. We get back to it and I'll bring you back when we're ready to move forward. That gets a thumbs up. Hang on, long reach thumbs up. There you go. Okay, we're dried, rinsed, and sanded, and we have a very faint line here and a very faint line here. I, I, can, I believe I can conceal that with color. When you get back here and you take it at another angle, you can see it a little bit better. Um, I'm going to do another coat of oxalic, and then that'll be it. It is what it is. Um, We'll see if the second coat of oxalic takes that off. If it doesn't, I'll deal with it with color when I refinish it. And our second coat is on and drying. And we'll see what happens when it dries, when I rinse it off, and get it dried out. Fingers crossed. And our second coat of oxalic is just about dried out. I'll give it another 10 minutes and rinse it off, and I'll let you know how we make out. Well, we're rinsed off. It's still damp, but it looks like that extra step may have helped us quite a little bit. So I'm just going to leave this out here to completely dry. We'll come back and check it, but that's it. I don't want to put too much oxalic on. you got to remember that this piece has been subject to chemical stripper first. Then it was subjected to heat and steam to get the dents out. Now it's been subjected to uh, oxalic acid and water. And this is a thin sheet of veneer that's glued down over particle board, and we don't want to get to the point where we've manipulated this veneer so much that it starts to lift up. So right now I'm comfortable, but we've done what we can do. It looks like we have had some success and we're going to deal with the results, whatever they would be. We're not going to, we're not going to beat this up anymore. So I'll bring you back when this is all dried off and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, we're dried and sanded. It's not completely gone, but it's faded. We're going to just have to deal with it. That's all there is to it. I mean, there's there's really not that much there, and when you look at the piece casually, you're not going to see it. But if you know what you're looking for, you got here, here, and here. We did the best we could. Let's move on. We'll get this piece sealed up, 
and see how she takes the color and if we have to play around with the color a little bit to break those lines up we will. Okay we've got the top sanded, we've got it uh, blown off, dusted off, I put new uh, plastic on the uh, body of the piece, we're ready to shoot our first coat of sealer. And here it is with its first coat of pre-cat on it, lacquer top coat. So we colored it and shot it with uh, a lacquer top coat. I think it looks fine. Um, you know, remember any time that you do a table or uh, a buffet, the top should always be just a little bit lighter than the rest. You don't want them darker. So I'm going to let this lacquer coat dry. And we'll make a final decision on the color, but it's it's almost an absolute dead match for the sides. And maybe just a hair less red for the front. So I'm going to let this dry and we'll make a final decision. Well, hey, we had the boss in here to check the work, and she loves the color just the way it is. So I guess we're pretty much done. I'm just going to let this lacquer coat dry. I'll sand it out and shoot another coat of lacquer on it. Uh... One more time, take a look at what we've got here. And again, this lacquer is still a little bit shiny, so, but there you go. And if you remember what we started with, we had a huge gouge right here. We had hammer marks right here. We had a cigarette burn right here. And we had a big square stain in the middle of the table that we've been able to pretty well get out of there. So there it is from 1964. It was very, very well kept by the prior owners, with the exception of whoever put that square thing on the, on the top. And uh, we've got that resolved, and she's all done. So look, there's no sense uh, in you watching me shoot additional coats of lacquer. Uh, i got to let this thing set out in the shop for a day to get hard before I drag it back into the house and set it up. So I'm going to call the video here. I hope you learned something. We did this entire project in one day and just, you know, waited for dry times, particularly with the oxalic, but that's how we do it. So listen, from our shop just outside of Kennesaw here in North Georgia, best regards, thanks for watching, take good care, and we'll see you next video. Bye.